Good morning, my dear students. I want to start the class now. Yeah. Uh, so, everybody has taken the test yesterday. The problem you will find. You can unmute yourself and you can speak to me. Bharat, are you there? Bharat? Bharat, can you hear me? Bharat. So in today's class, uh, just uh, just moving to the module two. So I uh, completed the module three in the last class. Okay. So hope uh, you have got uh, just uploaded some materials and everything in yesterday's uh, uh, yesterday I and mean, Google Classroom. So you can uh, I think that uh, course material already been uploaded. Only the PPTs I uploaded yesterday. So please prepare, and uh, I want everybody to attend the test today. So today you might be you are having a. Uh, from 9 to 10, the ready manufacturing. The syllabus for the ready manufacturing uh, this is uh, the module one completely, and uh, only the polymers I have added. Okay, so no powder metallurgy. Only till polymers you can uh, prepare and you can uh, attend the test today. Okay, yeah. So in today's class, uh, let me start with uh, the module two. So basically, in module two, uh, we have to discuss uh, two important concepts. One is called uh, system drives and devices, and the second one is the actuators. So this uh, module is basically consisting of uh, uh, sketches and explanations. Okay, so very simple chapter. Uh, less content is involved in this. So uh, you can, uh, but only thing is you have to practice the sketches because so many sketches you will go to get it. So because we have to discuss the both the mechanical part as well as the electrical part in these cases, right? So you should be in a position to draw the sketches neatly, and you have to give the explanation. Okay. So not much uh, uh, content is involved. Only just eight hours they have given this. I think they are not expressing much of the details in this uh, concept. Okay. So in today's class, uh, so we are going to discuss uh, this entire module in two different parts. So first part. Uh, we are going to start with the system drives and devices, and in the second part, uh, we are going to discuss with the uh, actuators. Okay. So in today's class, uh, first we are going to complete uh, the first part of the module two, which is the system drives and devices. Okay. And if time permits, I will take the actuators uh, in the next. Okay. Let us start with the uh, in my system drives and devices. So what we supposed to determine, what we supposed to discuss is. Uh, only a few concepts. One is called uh, the motors. Okay, that is uh, motors in the sense uh, all the type. One is the uh, hydraulic type of motors and their features. Second one is uh, the pneumatic type, the air motors, pneumatic uh, motors or air motors and their features. And uh, third important thing, what we are supposed to discuss is uh, the electrical type of motor, both AC and DC motors. So this is what uh, the uh, first part of the module two. Okay, in the second part, we need to have the actuators. So just like uh, solenoids or uh, any electrical type of actuators or mechanical type of actuators, we need to discuss the shape memorial laws like that. There are so many things that we have in actuators. Part. So those things we are going to discuss it in later. So I will be taking the first part of uh, the module two. First, we are going to complete them, and later we will move on to the actuators. Okay, so. In um, system drives and uh, devices, uh, we need to discuss uh, motors. That's what I was talking about. Motors, uh, hydraulic type, pneumatic type, and electrical type. So all the three types involves the different types and uh, their configuration, the principle of uh, operation, and the relatively their advantages and disadvantages, and their uh, schematic reference. So let us start with now. Let us uh, first. I am going to start with the hydraulic motor. Okay. So let us discuss uh, what is hydraulic motor. What is the principle of operation of the hydraulic motor? And what are the different types of hydraulic motors are available? And uh, their construction. And uh, at the end, uh, we need to have the calculations. 
or how to calculate uh, the power transmission or uh, the efficiency, everything needs to be. I have, we'll have a little bit of uh, calculation part in uh, the motors also. Okay. Let us start with the first one. What we call it as a hydraulic motor. So basically, a hydraulic motor is a mechanical actuator. So what happens in a hydraulic motor is, it is the one which converts the hydraulic pressure and flow into a torque and angular displacement or rotation, what we can call it. So basically, a motor is a counterpart of a hydraulic cylinder as a linear actuator. So where it converts the hydraulic pressure and flow. So hydraulic pressure is converted into a torque, whereas the flow is converted into an angular displacement or a rotation. So such type of uh, uh, mechanical actuator, we call that as a hydraulic motor. Okay. So that's what uh, the second statement sentence, what this says is, the hydraulic motor is a rotary counterpart of the hydraulic cylinder as a linear actuator. Basically, this type of motor we can see in the hydraulic uh, components or hydraulic circuits. So where uh, this type of motors uh, will be acting as an actuator. So where uh, the uh, pressure, the hydraulic pressure is converted into a torque and the flow is converted into an angular displacement. So this is what the definition of an hydraulic motor. This hydraulic motor produces a rotation of the shaft and torque when the fluid under pressure is supplied. In the sense, when you supply a fluid, when you supply a fluid under a pressure, so this hydraulic motor will produce the rotation of the top and the rotation of the shaft and the top. So this is the, what the working of an hydraulic motor. This motor is usually designed for working pressure on both the sides of the motor. So in the sense, it is not on the one side. So both the sides of the motor, it is capable of which it will be designed for working in the sense when you supply a fluid uh, in both the direction or in both sides of the motor, it has been designed in such a way that it will go into convert the hydraulic pressure and uh, the flow into a torque and the rotation. This is how these motors will be always been designed. So these motors are back driven and of course it can also be what are the back driven motors also. Then we move on into the types of hydraulic motors. So <clears throat> we have uh, four different types here it is mentioned, but generally we discuss uh, in our syllabus that we have only three types. Okay, gear motors, vein motors, and piston motors. But this uh, gear rotor motor we are going to discuss under uh, the pneumatic or uh, air motors. Type. Okay, so of course. Uh, both the things are similar, but uh, when you are syllabus, they specified only the gear motors, vein motors, and piston motors. Of course, gear rotor motor is also there, but we will be restricting our discussion for hydraulic motor with only with the three types of motors. One is a gear motor, vein motor, and piston motor. Okay. Let's discuss one by one in detail. Let's take the gear motor. Basically, this gear and vein motors are used in simple rotating systems. Their benefit includes low initial cost and high RPM. In the sense, uh, both the gear and the vein motors, they are uh, employed only in the very simple rotating systems. Okay? And uh, most important benefit of these two types of gear and uh, vein motors is uh, they are low in initial cost and they have they will rotate at a very high RP. So in such cases, in such uh, motors, high pressure oil is ported into one side of the gears where it flows around the periphery of the gears between the gear tips and the wall housing in which it resides to the outlet port. So look at this, this is a diagram, it's a very simple schematic diagram. So we have another one diagram I will show you that a complete description of uh, the gear motor, how it works. So this is a very simple uh, in construction of a gear motor, what we have shown here. So here, so the gears are there here. One is a, one is a, a driver and another one is a driven. So when you port or when you supply a fluid or a pressure oil under high pressure on from the one side, okay, 
where it flows around the periphery of the gates. It passes through, see, look at the direction of the flow of the oil it has been shown over here. So once the high pressure oil has been pumped in to this motor, so the motor, the oil will be moving around the periphery of the gates, one, uh, one in this direction and one hundred in this direction. Okay, gates between the gates, between the gates also it will pass across the periphery, across the, around the periphery, between the gates and the wall housing, everywhere. So completely it will be passing through the periphery of the gates, between the gates as well as the wall housing of the way in which it resides and it will pass us to the output, outlet port. So this is how the movement or the flow of high pressure oil is going to be taking place in the case of a gear motor. Well, especially positive attribute of the gear motor is that catastrophic breakdown is this common that in most of the types of hydrology. In the sense, this type of motors does not fail, so it does not break down, it does not uh, undergo uh, any failures. So catastrophic failures will does not take place in the case of a gear motor, which is more common in other type of hydrology. This is one of the major advantage of uh, this uh, gear motor. Okay? So let us take uh, the complete description of how it works. So this is the diagram what you can see. The, the gear motor, so this is the complete description, the sketches what, have show, uh, what is, has been displayed here. This is the one which we go into to understand clearly here. So here what's happening, a gear motor develops a torque to the hydraulic pressure acting on the surrounding surface of the gear teeth as illustrated in the figure. So this is the one. It's a very neat sketch. We can uh, we have to draw this sketch when they ask you to explain uh, the gear motor. The gear motor, a gear motor develops a torque. So that's what we are talking about, which converts the pressure, hydraulic pressure, into a torque. Pressure is converted into a torque. So that's what. So the motor develops a torque due to the hydraulic pressure acting on the surfaces of the Gear teeth as shown in the figure. So let us discuss this one by one over here. So let us take the first one, the torque development by the rotor. The sketch will what this represents is the torque development by a rotor, motor, sorry, motor. So first one, these two teeth are subject to the high pressure and tend to rotate gears in the direction of the axis. See, this is the one. So these, these two teeth, which you are or what we are showing here, these two teeth or subject to the high pressure because you are uh, pumping the oil in this direction. You are pumping the oil. You are allowing the oil to enter into the gear motor in this direction. And hence, these teeth will be subjected to a high pressure, high pressure, and they will go into rotate the gears in the direction of the arrows. So how it will move? It will go into rotate in this same direction. So you can see this. Okay. Second one, the segments of the two machine teeth, segments of the two machine teeth, this point, what I'm talking about, the segments of the two machine teeth tend to oppose rotation, making net torque available a function of one tooth. In the sense, so when the two gears comes in contact or when they mesh, okay, so the periphery across it, the segments, you can see these segments here. So this is the tooth of a one gear and this is the tooth of the other one gear. Let's see, look at here. Okay, that periphery, the segments of the two machine teeth tend to oppose the rotation, making net torque available. So when they start opposing, the rotation, so then they will go to give the net torque. So that pressure is converted into a torque over here. Okay. Then third one, a pressure between the teeth in these segments pushes both ways and does not affect the torque as oil is carried around the outlet. So this is the one what I am showing over here. So the outlet, so this portion, this portion. <laughs> Okay. So these portions, what it is showing here is 
the pressure between the teeth in these segments in these segments across this between the periphery and the wall the segment pushes both ways and does not affect the torque as oil is carried around to the outlet so oil will be carried around to the outlet by this periphery the same thing you can see here the same thing is happening here also okay so from here to here the oil will be carried away so pressure between the teeth in these segments so here the uh, torque does not affect it okay but only the oil will be carried around the outlet and the last one what we move here is these two teeth have only tank line pressure opposing them so last to these two teeth we can see here what it is shown here these two teeth these two teeth have only a tank line pressure and opposing them that's it okay this is how the torque will be generated or how the motor will generate the torque which is performed for the uh, uh, converts the sorry hydraulic pressure is gets converted into a torque i'll explain once again so this is the inlet and this is the outlet okay as uh, this is what we have shown here how uh, uh, high pressure oil enters passes through the periphery between the gates and wall housing in which okay and it will comes out of the outlet the same thing we have shown here also so the black color what we are showing the oil is entering over here okay oil entering here so the two teeth which are subject to the high pressure so two teeth what they are showing these two teeth because the high pressure oil once it enters uh, it will go into be the pressure will be uh, uh, applied over these two teeth and they tend to rotate the gears in the direction of the arrow so this will be rotated in the same direction the segment of the two meshing teeth tend to oppose rotation making net torque available so when the two teeth when they are mesh with each other this is here here this portion or this portion this is the direction this is the one yes so when the two teeth comes in contact with each other okay then the segments of the two meshing teeth tend to oppose the rotation and making the net torque available so then the third point is pressure between the teeth in the segments pushes both ways and does not affect the torque so in this totally across this so this periphery so this entire periphery what it is been shown in the semi uh, the plot all here so that is means the pressure between these segments will over completely here pushes the oil towards the outlet and it does not affect the torque so on either side because oil going to split like this and the oil which is passing through this segments will does not affect the torque but oil is carried around to the outlet and the last one what we have got the two teeths is opposite to the one what we are showing here these two teeth have only a tank line pressure opposing them that's the only pressure which opposes these two teeth this is how we can understand how the gear motor will develop that part so this is happening in the segment across the two machine teeth okay next comes the second type what we call it as vein motor a vein motor consists of a housing with an eccentric bore in which in which runs a motor with wheels in it that slide in and out the force differential carried sorry the force differential created by unbalanced force of the pressurized fluid on the wheels causes the rotor to spin in one direction So basically, what this vein motor consists of? Basically, it consists of a uh, housing with an eccentric bore. Eccentric bore in the sense the uh, axis does not coincide with the axis of the housing. It will have an eccentric bore in which a rotor runs with the veins in it that slides in and out. The veins can so so. This is we can see here. so we are able to see this is the rotor 
okay this is the which is in the blue color it is a rota okay so which carries the veins so the one what it is been projecting out they are called veins they are all called veins these veins can slide in and out it can move in and out of the rota okay so the force differential created by the unbalanced force of the pressurized fluid on the veins causes the rota to spin in one direction so as the high pressure oil enters okay so this high pressure oil or high pressure fluid will creates a differential force or an unbalanced force okay and that causes the rota to spin in any one direction a critical element in vane motor design is how the vane tip or machine at the contact point between the vane and the motor house several type of uh, lift designs are used and the main objective is to provide a tight seal between the inside of the motor housing and the vane and the same to the and the same time to minimize the wear and metal to metal contact so this is because see one of the most uh, critical element in the vane motor vein motor is the vane tips vane tips are very 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 important here so now we should take uh, due care while you are designing the vane tip because vane tips how the vane tips are machine because these vane tips will uh, come in contact with the motor housing okay so now when you are designing when you are designing a vane motor you should take you take care when uh, how these vane tips are machine at the point of contact between the vane tip and the motor so there are several uh, type of lip designs lip designs they use and the main objective is to found or to provide a tight seal between the inside of the motor housing and the vane okay so tight seal between the inside of the motor housing and the vane and at the same time to minimize the wear and metal to metal contact so this is a very important thing very uh, critical uh, thing what is supposed to be taken uh, to care while you are designing the vein tips in the case of the vein motor okay so we will discuss this in much more detail so this vein motors develop torque by hydraulic pressure acting on the exposed surfaces of the veins which slide in and out of the rotor connected to the drive shaft this is we go to show it this is how we go show as the rotor revolves the vein follow the surface of the camber because springs are used to force the veins radially out no centrifugal force exists until the rotor starts to revolve therefore veins must have some means other than centrifugal force to hold them against the camber some design use springs whereas other types use the pressure loaded veins the sliding action of the veins forms sealed chambers which carry the fluid from inlet to the outlet this uh, so this is uh, the what we are talking about the vane motors so this is the diagram what you can understand easily See what's happening here is so this is the vein what you are getting this is the rotor this is the driver shaft okay the pressure on this vein means a force so when a pressurized fluid when it uh, passes over this so it will go into create a differential pressure the unbalanced differential force of pressure will create an unbalanced force which tends to move the veins so the resulting force on the vein creates the torque on the motor shaft so the force which will going to act so that force multiplied by the radial distance will going to create a torque so once the torque is created then the rotor will start moving 
So this is a very simple uh, uh, diagram and you can easily understand. This is the basic operation of a vane. It is just like uh, how, we dis how we discussed uh, your uh, turbines. Same principle we are using here. Uh, maybe I think uh, uh, radial pressures, radial turbines, what you have discussed in your uh, EME, the same principle here. So the system pressure means the fluid pressure as it enters and uh, pressure once it strikes because of the high pressure, okay? So the differential pressure causes the unbalanced force. This unbalanced forces which creates the torque on the motor shaft. So the rotor will stop rotating. So this is what uh, we call that as the vein motors. So this is the diagram, what it is the under one diagram, you can easily understand so how the driver shaft and how the wheels are connected. Okay, so this is the inlet port, I will explain here. This is the inlet port through which the high pressurized oil will enter or fluid will go into enter. Okay, and because of the pressure or the differential pressure, the force will be created, force will be, the unbalanced force will be generated. This unbalanced force will causes a torque. Okay, so that torque makes the uh, rotor to rotate, which in turn the rotor is mounted on the driver shaft and the driver shaft will go into. So, this is how the basic principle of the vane motor. One thing you should understand here is this vanes can slide, it can slide in and out of the rotor. Okay, so this is the simple sketch, and this is the one which will go into explain the principle. Principle. This is what it is showing here. So, until unless the rotor will start rotating, there will be no centrifugal force. Okay. So, only the pressure difference causing the unbalanced forces, which in turn converts it into a torque. Okay. Once the rotor starts rotating, the centrifugal forces will go into hold the veins them together. Hold the uh, winds against the cam. See, some uh, designers they use the springs to hold it. Okay, whether the other types they will go into the pressure loaded winds. The sliding action of the winds forms sealed chambers which carry fluid from inlet to the so This is what uh, the vein motors. Okay, so we had we had to draw both the diagrams here. This is explaining the, the complete sketch of the vein motor, and this will go to explain only the principle of operation of a vein motor. So both the diagrams has to be drawn when they ask you to explain the vein motors. Okay. Next comes third one is the piston motor. So this is the diagram. I won't explain this diagram later. It has a cylinder which two pistons are mounted. So there are two pistons are there on either side you can see here. Okay. So I won't explain this later, this sketch later. So first is piston motors are uh, can be either fixed or variable displacement units. They generate torque by pressure acting on the ends of the piston, reciprocating inside a cylinder. The figure what we are showing next figure is uh, illustrates the inline design in which the motor, driver shaft, and the cylinder blocks are centered on the same axis. Pressure acting on the ends of the piston generates a force against the angle slash plate. This causes the cylinder block to rotate with the torque that is proportional to the area of the piston. The torque is also a function of the slash plate angle. The inline motor is, see this is the diagram what I am showing here. So I think you can uh, is it understand this diagram which is uh, describing uh, so many uh, points over here? So, one thing what we have to understand here is the sketch. So this is the inlet port, the black what we are showing it is an inlet port where the, the fluid enters, the high pressure fluid will enter, and this is the outlet port. Okay. This is the outlet port. Next, we have the piston. So piston subassembly. This is a piston subassembly. This is a piston which is in dotted. What it is showing, it can move in this direction. Okay. So 
This is the driver shaft, and this is the splash plate. Okay, this is what we call it as the splash plate. This is the one what I have shown the diagram over here. You can see here. Okay, that is just uh, this is the cut section model what I am showing here. So this is the shaft. Okay, so this is the piston. On either side, we have a piston. Okay, so this is the oil enter into the piston and oil moves out. This is the inlet and this is the outlet. Okay, and this is what we call it as a splash plate. On either side, you can see the splash plate over here. Okay, so of course, this is a motor housing. Okay, this splash plate does not rotate. It does not rotate here. So this is a piston mounting plate, as it is in the green color. We call it as a piston mounting plate. This is the cut section diagram, and here we have shown it is also this diagram what has been shown here for the purpose of explanation. Okay. So let us explain the points here. It is given in the order one, two, three, four, five. We are going to start now. Right. So first one, the oil under pressure at the inlet. So the oil enters. The piston motor under pressure through this inlet, through this inlet port, okay, exerts a force on the pistons, forcing them out of the cylinder block. In the sense, as it passes through, it exerts a force on the piston, forcing them out of the cylinder block. It may exerts a pressure and the piston will start moving up, okay. The piston thrust is transmitted to the angled splash plate, causing the rotation. So these pistons are connected over here to the splash plate here. Okay, and as the splash, as the piston passes, our piston forces them out of the cylinder block. So what happens? This piston thrust is being transmitted to the angle plate, angle splash plate. So this angle splash plate will uh, make certain to rotate. As the pistons, shoe plate, and cylinder block rotate together, the drive shaft is flying to the cylinder block. As a piston, shoe plate. The shoe plate is there. This is a shoe plate. What we are showing here, shoe retainment retainer plate. Okay, so this is a splash plate. Okay. So what's happening here is. The piston, shoe plate, and the cylinder block will rotate together. The splash plate does not rotate. Only the piston thrust, which causes uh, the torque, which makes the pistons, both the pistons, shoe plate. So what I have shown here is the shoe plate. So outside is the splash plate. Okay, and the cylinder block, the entire cylinder block, which starts rotating together. The drive shaft is flying to the Cylinder block. So the drive shaft is there here. So I think you can easily understand this diagram here. This is the drive shaft. This is the drive shaft. It is uh, supplying to the cylinder here. Okay. Now at the end, as the piston passes inlet, it begins to return into the bore because of the splash plate angle. Exhaust fluid is pushed into the Outlet port. Since the and the splash plate has been angled, okay. So what happens? The piston, as it has been moved out of this, it will start making the oil to push out of the. This is the piston passage. As the piston passes inlet, as the piston passes inlet, the, it begins to return into its bore because of the splash plate angle. Exhaust fluid is pushed into the outlet. In the direction you can see here, the piston as it is moved out, so it will start moving in. It will, which as it passes towards the inlet, it start moving the oil to out of the outlet. Okay, so this is how the thrust will be generated and how uh, the uh, piston motors will go into work. Okay, so these are some of the types of uh, sketch of some of the piston motors here. So here uh, we have uh, uh, what we call it as straight axis piston motor. So axis is straight. Okay, so same principle here also. And we have stationary cylinder radial piston motors. 
So you can see the, how the pistons are arranged radially. Okay, bent axis piston motor. The axis has been bent and rotating cylinder type radial piston motor. So this is a uh, you can see this different uh, uh, design of uh, the radial piston motor. It is the cylinder itself will be rotating, rotating cylinder type radial piston motor. So the pistons are arranged radially and the cylinder will also stop rotating. So these are the different types of uh, piston motors what we are having. Okay. The piston motors are the most efficient of three basic types and are capable of operating at highest speeds and pressure. Operating speeds of uh, 12,000 RPM and pressures of uh, 5,000 PSI can be obtained with piston motor. Large piston motors are capable of delivering flows of just 450 gallons per minute. So these piston motors are uh, most efficient than that of the basic type. Okay. So now we have a theoretical calculation. The theoretical torque capacity of the hydraulic motor can be determined by the following equation, which is identical to the used for the hydraulic actuator. So here we have uh, the formula here. Uh, of course, so the first equation is not required for us. The second equation, if you look at the torque, which is with metric units, okay, so which we have. The torque capacity is T is equal to V meter cube per revolution, which is in this into P by 6.8. So this is the equation what we use it for. The torque will be in Newton meter. Okay. Meter cube per revolution over here. So you're going to get a meter per revolution. Okay. So thus the torque capacity is proportional to not only to the pressure but also to the volumetric displacement. So V sub is the volumetric displacement. Okay. So I will stop at this point now. Okay. So I will going to continue in the afternoon class. So if anybody has got any clarifications, you can do. Thank you. 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 Thank you.